President. Senator from Oregon. Madam President, I want to say to my colleague from Illinois, I am so proud to be a supporter of your legislation that is going to provide the necessary protections for women in America to become mothers. And I think I mentioned this to my colleague at lunch a couple of days ago. 30 years ago, Madam President, I wrote the Fertility Clinic Success Rate and Certification Act into law. And I would just say to my colleague, back then, we never thought, never thought we'd have to be standing today on the floor of the United States Senate debating this as we are today. But we are here because a few days ago, Alabama's far-right Supreme Court handed down a first-of-its-kind ruling, effectively making IVF impossible in Alabama. So we're seeing heartbreaking headlines about couples in that state being forced to rethink their plans to start a family through the IVF process that was just, in effect, getting going back then, 30 years ago. Some of these families have already spent tens of thousands of dollars and have undergone extensive medical treatment. Alabama's largest hospital system, the University of Alabama, has already passed, paused its IVF services out of fear of prosecution. The decision to conceive a child through IVF is rarely ever a parent's first choice. It's physically and emotionally painful and taxing, it's tedious, and it's expensive. But for countless couples dreaming of just one thing, just one thing, the chance to start a family, the legislation that my colleagues have been working on is absolutely essential. The IVF journey, as we started talking about years ago, for so many parents is grueling filled with countless doctor's appointments, agonizing waits for test results, and too often, too often, disappointment. The process is very delicate. Embryos can expire at any time during the process entirely by accident. Under Alabama's new ruling, a doctor or a woman undergoing treatment could be charged with wrongful death if an embryo expires during the IVF transfer or implementation process. That means women who are already undergoing this incredibly painful process, could also be handed a wrongful death lawsuit on top of everything else. That, in my view, Madam President and colleagues, is nothing short of criminalizing parents, who tr criminalizing people who try to become parents. Unfortunately, while this ruling is a shocking one, it's not all that surprising if you've been paying attention to the ongoing war that the far right is waging on women and families in America. For years, Republicans laughed off the concerns about the vulnerability of abortion protections under Roe. Then they gutted it at the first opportunity. Since the Dobbs decision, these same Republicans have tried again to convince the American people that there's no threat of a national abortion, abortion law and no threat to any other facet of reproductive freedom like contraception. In short, no domino effect. Instead, the repeal of Roe has laid the groundwork for an onslaught of court rulings, just like this one in Alabama, which explicitly references the Dobbs case. The gaslighting would be laughable if it weren't so terrifying. We've all become familiar with the adage, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. At every opportunity, Republicans have moved mountains, in order to restrict the constitutional rights and freedoms of women, making it impossible for them to live their lives free from government intrusion. And it's pretty clear to me they're not going to rest until there's a politician in every bedroom and an exam room in America. In the wake of last week's ruling, I saw a lot of my Republican colleagues attempt to distance themselves from the decision, claiming that they unequivocally support IVF. But that's what they put in motion when they overturned Roe versus Wade. In fact, a year ago, Senate Democrats tried to pass Senator Duckworth's bill. Senate Republicans blocked it. So now it's clear, if colleagues really do support IVF, as so many were spending the whole weekend claiming, then they're in luck. 
They're in luck because Senator Duckworth is going to give them an opportunity to prove it by going on the record and this evening supporting this legislation. And as I say to my friend from Illinois, you know, I was thinking of you coming over here today because back 30 years ago, nobody ever thought we'd have to be out here just trying to get started and making sure families had information. But what you're doing is so incredibly important, Senator Duckworth, because with your legislation in America, we will have the necessary protections for women to become mothers using IVF. I urge my colleagues to strongly support the Duckworth legislation.